Several students in our class are still struggling with long division, but it's mostly because they don't know their multiplication facts. So I'm going to um, show you this video here where I've taught them in class how to use their multiplication chart to solve long division problems where um, they won't write down the wrong answer because they don't know their facts. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to write down our acronym that we use to solve long division. I have changed it just a tad. Um, we use Does McDonald's Sell Cheeseburgers? So it is Does McDonald's Sell Cheeseburgers? So DMSCB. When they complete this, they are going to need three pencils. I am actually going to use two pencils and a pen just for the simple fact that a pen will show up better on the video whenever I'm writing, but when students are completing this, they will need three pencils. So um, make sure that they have three whenever they are doing this. The first thing they are going to do is they are going to look and see what number right here is on the outside of their house. In our instance, we have the number four here. So they're going to take one of their pencils and they're going to set it on their paper using the point of their pencil to point at the number four because that shows us that we are working with are fours. Then they are going to use the other pencil and the first thing we're doing is we're dividing. So I am looking here and I'm asking myself how many times can seven be divided by four? So I'm going to take this pencil that I'm using over here with my four and I'm going to start running it along over here on my multiplication chart and I'm going to keep going until I find a number that is bigger than 7. 4 is smaller than 7 but 8 is bigger. Well I have to find a number that's smaller than 7 so that means I have to go back 1. So I'm going to leave that right there. On this one, first one it's usually a pretty low number. It's about to fall. Okay. Then I'm going to take my other pencil. This first pencil stays put on the first number that's smaller than 7 because we don't want to go bigger. And I'm going to take my second pencil and I'm going to start at that number but then I'm going to go all the way to the top to see what that number is. And I'm going to point my pencil at the number on the top. So here we see that the top pencil is pointing at the number 1 and my bottom pencil is pointing at the number four. I've told them in class that they want to be very, very careful not to bump anything because if they bump, then that's going to make their pencils roll and they'll be on the wrong spot. Now, once we have our pencils in the correct spot, that tells me where these two numbers go. So my one is going to go on top of my seven and my 4 is going to go below my 7. But, I'm sorry, I, I skipped one important thing. We always draw a box around our problem to help us when we are solving, to help us keep our numbers in order. Okay. So this step right here went ahead and took, a, took the division part and the multiplication part. This helps kids because if they don't know their multiplication facts, it did the multiplication part for them. It also helps them because if they forget where to put the numbers at, it shows them this number goes on top, this number goes on bottom. So if they forget which number goes in which place, then they know because it's right there. So they can kind of skip right on over to the third step, which is subtract. So now, since I have that, I can go ahead and subtract. 
7 minus 4 is 3. Now I can check my, re my remainder. Is 3 less than 4? Yes, it is. Now I'm going to do my B. So I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to write that 3 in front of my 5. So now I'm working with 35. This means I'm ready to start back over at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my pencils again. This time when I start at my 4, I'm looking for a number that's smaller than 35. So I take my first pencil again and I start at the 4 and I move my pencil over until I get to, right, 36 is bigger than 35, so I have to go here. So I'm going to set this pencil down, pointing at 32. Then I'm going to take my second pencil. I'm going to start it at 32, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to point it. I'm going to have to point it this way. I'm going to point it at 8 because that's the number that is directly on top of 32. So again, the top pencil tells me the number that goes on top. The bottom pencil is pointing to the number that goes down here. I've taken care of my divide and my multiply step. So now I'm ready for my subtract. 35 minus 32 is 3. Now I'm going to check my remainder. Is 3 smaller than 4? Yes, it is. So now I'm going to bring up my remainder, which is 32, and now I'm ready to start over again. So I take my pencils up. Again, I'm looking for the number 32. So I go back to my 4 with my first pencil. I use my pencil to go over and find 32 or the number that's smallest. There is 32. So I'm going to leave my pencil right there. I take my second pencil. I start at 32 and I go up and the number on top is 8. So I know that my number that's going to go up here on top is 8. My number that's going to go down here below it is 32. I've taken care of my divide and my multiply step. So now I'm ready to subtract. 32 minus 32 is 0. Is 0 smaller than 4? Yes, it is. So I checked my, my remainder. Now I have to bring it up. Even though this is a 0, and we as adults know from long division that I don't technically have to bring that up, I still want them to do it to be in the practice of doing that and not forgetting a step. So now we have 6. So one last time, we're going to take those pencils out of the way. We're going to get our first pencil, go back to 4, and I'm looking for a number that's smaller than 6. 4 is smaller, but 8 is bigger, so I have to stop at the number 4. And then I'm going to take my second pencil, and I'm going to start at 4, and follow it up, and the number on top is 1. So that means I know that my number that's on top is going to be a 1, and my number that's going to be down here is going to be a 4. So I did my division and I did my multiplication. I'm ready to subtract. 6 minus 4 is going to be 2. Now I'm going to check my remainder. Is 2 smaller than 4? Yes, it is. And now I'm going to bring up what is left. Since there's no box left here, that means I have a remainder of 2. And that is how we use a multiplication chart to help us to divide and multiply when we are doing long division. I do realize that this method does look quite a bit different from the long division that we learned when we are in school. But again, when students are in fourth grade now, um, they are expected to learn how to do long division using um, a model, and this is considered a model. Um, it helps their brain develop. Um, it's a step before they learn the standard long division method, so they will eventually learn the normal long division method, 
Um, this is just a step to help them get there. In fifth grade, they will learn it the traditional way, um, but this is what we are doing to help them get there eventually. This is great to help um, kids that struggle, and I'm sure that many of us struggled to get there when we were younger. Um, if you have any questions, please send me a message, and I would be happy to help. Have a great evening.